Hello everyone, George Packard, Family Lawn and Landscape. Today we're going to talk about HOA advertising and that starts now. HOA advertising. It's almost the same as how do you get HOAs. Well, you got to start somewhere, right? Your advertising is a huge part of that. So, here's what you do. Number one, you can Google it. You can go on the net, type in homeowners associations, Rockledge, Florida, or whatever city you happen to be working in or you want business in. They'll give you a listing of these different HOAs. At that point, that's a starting point. Now, that's not going to teach you everything you need to know. And keep in mind, what you're after is you need a list. You need to talk to somebody that's in charge of that thing. So be it an operations manager, president, whoever's in charge of the grounds maintenance. Those are the guys that you're after. Okay? Don't spend your time talking to people that don't have anything to do with it. There may be 20 members on the board, but you got one guy that's in charge of the grounds maintenance. That's the guy you want to talk to, okay? So, what you're going to do, start out, Google it, get your list. <clears throat> Another thing you could also do, if you didn't want to do that too, you could just drive around, go to the different HOAs, jot down on a notepad, hey, this one's on the corner of Delegles and Smith, okay, and it's named Green Haven something or another, whatever it is, okay? You can write that down and then you can Google it on your phone when you're out in the field or when you get back to the office, okay? So, because some of them may just not be on the internet. So, anyway, a couple of ways that you can look for them right there. So, the next thing is um, you make a few calls. These calls now, keep in mind, <clears throat> you're going to make a few calls before you get these people. You need to have a notebook set aside with every name of those places because you're going to try and contact 15, 20, 30 of them or more and when they call you back, because odds are you're not going to get them on the phone right away. When they call you back, you better have that notepad with you. So keep it with you like for the next week after you make all these phone calls to these people. When they call you back, you can quickly whip open your page, get right to where, you know, John Smith is, you know, at it brims fire, whatever, you know, who cares. So that's where you want to be ready to jot your notes down when he does give you the information that you're looking for. Okay. So. Once you have that, once you have a contact person, what you tell them is, I would like to drop off some literature for you. Is there a, a time that we could meet? And most of the time, nine out of ten times, they're going to tell you there isn't a time that you can meet unless they're already looking for somebody else. Then they might be interested in seeing you, and yeah, they'll give you the time of day to come in and see them. Otherwise, he may just tell you to drop it off with the guard at the guard shack there, or he'll give you a spot to mail it to or something like that. Either way, it'll help you get your information you need so that you can get it in their hands. Now, here's what I do when it comes to HOAs. So after I found the guy to talk to, and I, I either set up a meeting with him or I have to drop off my packet. But my packet is, is keep in mind, it's going to go to the decision maker. I don't want this to go out to 20 board members. I'm not dropping off 20 packets. I'm dropping off one, and if his name is Alex Jones, I want Alex and Jones to get this, Okay. I want him to get this packet because it's expensive to put them together. So let's say you, you get these nice folders and you put them together and you, you've got all your stuff in them. So an example, this is a different one, but this isn't the one I use. But folders like this, you know, you have stuff in them, bring it out. Put a nice cover story letter in there. Just a nice letter from your company with a company letterhead on it. Describes who you are and what you do. Okay. Make it as nice and professional as possible. Go on the internet and just type in company, professional company letterheads. And you'd be amazed at how many beautiful letterheads that pop up. And take something off of that that you like and just copy it, okay? So, that's what you do. A brief little story about yourself. Don't go on for three pages. He doesn't want to read three pages. He'll read a paragraph about you and what this letter is about, and that's about it, okay? So, put all your bullet points in that first paragraph, okay? Then... Um, we always leave a copy of our insurance. We, we automatically do that. I think that separates us from the other companies. We put it right in there immediately so these guys can see that you have, and keep in mind, guys, you got to have a, at least a million dollars coverage to get into these HOAs. I'm telling you, I'm, I have yet to have one come to me and say well, you have to have $500,000 coverage or $750,000 coverage. Every one of them has been a million dollars plus. So don't let that scare you. You just go to your insurance company, tell them that's what you need, and that's how you get that insurance, okay? You pay them so much a month, whatever. So, anyway, then we also give them a letter of our 10 reasons why we're better than our competition, okay? 
We try to spell out all those things in that letter, and they're all things, and this is a very important thing to remember. Those things are things that bother these people. Think about an HOA. What are their top problems? Well, we monitor our guys. That's probably the number one thing. There's always a supervisor on the job. That's another huge thing for these guys. They, anything that you can think of that would piss these guys off, having gone through one company after another after another, and it always comes down to supervision and having a supervisor on the job every time they're there. You're not just sending a crew of six guys out to do it and you have no supervisor, no manager. You assure them that you will always have a manager. So that's one of your most important things to stress in your letter, okay? And in your 10 reasons that you're better, okay? Um, references. If you're currently doing any other ones, definitely put those in there. That's going to be a big plus to you. Now, if you're just trying to get your foot in the door and you don't have any yet, don't sweat it. Don't put references in. If you don't have them, don't put them in there. If you have commercial accounts, though, put those in there. Just throw those in there. If you're doing the local CVS pharmacy down the street, you know, or Walgreens or whatever, hey, throw it in there because it's, it's a commercial property. It looks good on paper, right? Okay. That being said, um, I always refer them to our website. Our website has a ton of stuff for them to go over. So if they don't want to go, if they want to find out more about us or they want to show board members, they can go on our website and see all kinds of things about our company. So that'll really give them a good understanding about what we're all about. Um, you can also send them emails if you want. So if you find out who they are, who the contact person is, get their direct email and just send them a brief letter saying that you, you'd be interested in bidding on their lawn care or their ground maintenance needs. Um, please let us know at your, you know, at your next available convenience. Um, you know, we'd love to be on the list of people to, to bid on your property because they may not be looking for someone right now, but they may take your information off that email, throw it in a file because they know six months from now, the contract's going to be up with the other guys. And we're not happy with him, so we're, we're already looking, but we, we can't do it for six months. But I'm going to take his information, I'm going to put it in that file. Then, in six months, you're going to get the call, okay? So you'll, you'll be able to come and bid on it like the rest of the guys. So anyway, those are some tips for the HOA advertising and how to get your foot in the door out there, I think. Uh, hopefully it's helped you guys out a little bit. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, I appreciate you guys watching. Leave me your comments down below. Thank you.